there was, my cell service went out. It, you know, it says searching. And it was so frustrating because I, I knew I was in the right row, but I didn't want to miss where, it, where the exit was. And it kept searching. It, you could tell the, the little thing was spinning, trying to connect. When I come to church today, or we come to ser- service tonight, I think that's what happens in our soul. We need, to, we need to search to find the connection with God because life beats you up. Life causes distractions. And we need to come back to the connection to God. And so I'm going to read a passage in Scripture, Psalm 63, in the first five verses. Just listen to these, these words of God as we center and bring our attention to the God who loves us and has provided for us everything, including his son, Jesus Christ. The psalmist said, God, you are my God. I eagerly seek you. There it is, looking for the connection. I thirst for you. My body faints for you in a land that is dry, desolate, and without water. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. My lips will glorify you because your faithful love is better than life. So I will bless you as long as I live. At your name, I will lift up my hands. You satisfy me as with rich food. My mouth will praise you with joyful lips. That's our connection. Let me pray, and we're going to bring that praise right to the Lord through our lips and our hearts. Let's pray. Father, we are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift high the name of Christ. And Father, we put all of our attention to you now for the next hour. Be glorified. Be amongst us with the joy as we connect with you to worship you because you so deserve it. Lord, speak to us through this service, through a song, through a prayer, through the message. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as we continue to worship in song. Christ is my first.
you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous and I know this well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret, when I was formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. God, how precious are your thoughts to me. How vast their sum is. If I counted them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake up, I am still with you.
sought the Lord. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard.
Counseling Liaison at the Ravines, which is our marriage uh, retreat center. Tonight, Pastor Bob will be talking about gender and who we are as human beings. And we've all come in from different paths. Some of you are married, some are single, some are widowed, and some of you might be divorced. No matter what your path is, you matter. I happen to be divorced and... That is not at all the path that I thought that my life would take. Um, the healing seems to be never ending. Navigating kids, finances, car repairs, that's not all easy to do all on your own. 
and I know some of you here tonight know exactly what I'm talking about. But God, if you let him, he can take your loneliness and turn it to, to contentment. He can take your pain and your anger and your sadness, and he can turn it into joy. And that won't happen overnight, but our prayer is that you'll let him try. Would you pray with me? God, we all find ourselves in different situations and stages of life. No matter where we are, please help us to find our identity in you. Help us to have servant hearts and love people well. Especially those of us who are single and possibly struggling, would you help bring healing to our hearts? I pray that we will be overwhelmed with joy and contentment. Lord, we just want to glorify you wherever you have us. God, as Pastor Bob speaks about the topic of gender, help us all to hear how much we matter to you, our creator. Please bless this message and all who hear it. Amen. Hi, Faith Church. I'm Lily. And I'm Alex. And we're both a part of Faith Students, and we lead the 6th grade girls small group, which we absolutely love, and we're here to bring you guys some announcements. Faith Kids is so excited to announce our annual fun run will be coming up on Saturday, June 1st. Registration is now open. You can sign up to be a volunteer, a sponsor, or, of course, a runner. And all the money raised will go to the Welcome Network, because they're raising money to pay for a house, so that's pretty amazing. And for more information, you can check out wearefaith.org slash funrun. Do you guys love taking pictures, working with cameras, and capturing moments? Then we would love to have you on our photography team. So if you're interested in joining, you can contact Linnea at the email below. Lastly, make sure you come to our all-campus worship night, May 8th. Mark it down in your calendars, bring all your friends, because it's going to be a super amazing night for all of you and your family to enjoy. And for our last two announcements, we're going to kick it over to Pastor Bob and Jason. Bye. Greetings, Faith Church. Pastor Jason and myself are out here at Be Faith Church Beecher. And as you can see, they're already in a building mode behind us as well. And it's exciting because Faith Church Beecher is adding on to the east side of their current facility for more and more ministry space. Jason, what are some of those needs that are here at Faith Beecher? So currently, Faith Beecher really only has one large meeting space that can accommodate a good sized group. And we want to give them more because currently then, anytime they want to have faith students or another large gathering, they need to switch over their entire worship center. We also want to add space for faith students, faith kids, for the nursery, and that's all able to happen in this edition. Now I want to take your mind from Faith Beecher and imagine you're going to Faith Highland. And Faith Highland, a few years ago, added on some space on the east side of the building. Now they're going to match it on the west side of the building with a space for ministry. Yeah, and we just broke ground recently on that, so it's very exciting. We're adding, a, similar to Beecher, ancillary space. Because right now, for Faith Highland, when parents come in, for Faith Kids, there's a lot of different places they need to go to drop off their kids, pick up their kids, check in, do all those things. We want to make it safe, convenient for families, especially visiting families, to connect with our ministry. So that space is going to be added. It'll also be used for reflection our special needs ministry for faith students and for other groups that meet outside of Sunday mornings that God is just bringing to Faith Highland. And Faith Church, you are better together. We've looked at what God's doing in Faith Beecher, Faith Highland. Now I want you to go in your mind to Faith Cedar Lake. And I was just recently there preaching on the weekend and saw all three services growing like crazy. And they are going to be adding to the west side of their, their facility a new worship center. And we're excited about that as well. Yeah, we are finishing up the architectural drawings. We're hoping to break ground this summer and then have completion in 2025, late 2025 or early 2026. But not only that worship space for adults, but again, just more space for faith kids, faith students, reflectors, and our other ministries that are happening because of a growing location and what great issues to have. No doubt about it. And maybe you're new to Faith Church and this information is new. 
is a campaign called Better Together to help expand the ministry of our, our ministry God has given us called Faith Church. And we would love and invite you to join us even midstream of this Better Together campaign as well. Thank you for your generosity. And for those who've already pledged and are contributing, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate your faithfulness in that. If you've been wrestling through, hey, when do I fulfill my pledge? When do I give towards it? Can I just encourage you to give as soon as possible? Because actually, you'll already get a 7% return on your money because whatever we can receive now means we won't have to take a loan for later on, saving us 7% in interest. And so if you can do that, great. If not, we're just, again, thankful for your faithfulness and your giving. And have a great day. God bless you. I have some exciting news for Faith Church. We are going to be going online worship exclusively with YouTube. We think, and the research we've done shows it'll hopefully be easier for you. If you're out of town, if you're on vacation, if you're not feeling well, you're not able to come and worship in person, we feel that YouTube will be easier for you than Facebook. You don't need to have an account. You don't need to be doing all this searching or finding. Uh, you can just go to YouTube. You can punch in your home location for Faith Church. And every weekend when we have services in person, they will also be streamed onto YouTube. So if you have a smart TV, the app is probably already there just type in the name of your location hit that you want to like it and subscribe to it and it'll give you a reminder every time that they go live so move into faith church online via, via youtube we hope we'll see you there faith church is joining the lord on mission one relationship at a time well things are exciting isn't that cool well, one other little note about what God's doing at one church called Faith Church in the five different locations. We're also, a number of years ago, we started a new denomination. We left the Reformed Church in America, started with five churches, and now we're at 43 churches. And the reason I tell you that tonight is because this coming week, on Wednesday night, Thursday, and Friday, the churches across the United States that are part of the Kingdom Network, a community of Reformed churches, are going to gather here at Dyer for our gathering, our Every 18 months, we're going to have a gathering. So be in prayer. I have to speak at that event, and we have great um, breakout sessions. It's going to be kind of conference-esque, and also just a challenge for all the churches to continue to reproduce and multiply. And we're excited about what God's doing in the Kingdom Network as well. Well, if you're new to Faith Church, we're in a series um, based on the book of Genesis called Complicated Conversations. We're looking at God's truth found in Genesis. We started week one with the complicated question of sin and our choice to sin. And then last week we looked at the origin of humankind. Well, today we're going to be looking at gender, and I'd like to offer a word of prayer, and then we'll launch into the message. Let's pray together. Father, worship is a two-way street. We sing to you, we pray to you, and we offer our praise and thanksgiving to you. But you also speak to us. And right now, in the, the Word of God, in the, as is preached and taught, we're going to hear from you. The Bible says, how will they know if someone doesn't teach or preach? And Lord, you've given me the task, teach your Word this evening. And I pray your blessing on myself as I communicate, but also every ear that will hear the truth of God's Word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look at gender this evening from God's Word. Gender. And I'm going to answer questions uh, throughout the message. The first question is, why? Why on earth should we talk about gender? You're probably going, like, come on, can't we do something else? Well, the truth is, we need to hear from God in, as it relates to gender. You see, the reason we need to talk about it is because the culture in which we live in, living in is shouting. And the church can't be silent. The culture we live in is screaming and shouting about gender. Let me give you a couple examples. California currently has legislation going on right now in their government, their state government, where they would like to teach kindergartners, five-year-old kindergartners, that there are 15 different genders. Why do we need to talk about this? 
Because in general teaching on human sexuality in the United States of America right now teaches that there are 72 different genders. I don't want to bore you with the list of all 72, but they are very interesting and peculiar. There are people that, I can't even just uh, tell you the word of it, it's something gender, but they, are, they feel they're married to nature and they have a relationship with nature. Maybe you heard in the news in the last couple weeks what went on in Oregon, the state of Oregon, the high school track meet where a transgender athlete competed against girls in the 200-meter race. And he won, he who thinks he's a she, ran and won by unbelievable amount of, of victory. It was set a new record. Well, since then, the parents have been, of these young girls have been screaming and saying, this isn't fair. Why do we need to talk about this? Because of the need in our culture, there is such gender confusion and dysphoria at the highest level right now in American history. And people that struggle with gender dysphoria and confusion have a higher rate of mental illness, health problems, substance abuse, and self-harm, sometimes suicidal ideation. And we need to talk about it Because sometimes, from time to time, Christians and churches have caused pain and agony to people who are have struggled with gender identification. People use words like, "Oh, that's gross." Those people are nuts. They're sicko. Because we need to be discipled by the Word of God. We need to hear what God's Word says, not what social media says, not what you think, not what you feel. Not what the government's saying. We need to hear from God. God, what is your design for humankind? If you're breathing, which I think all of you are, you and I are living in a disorienting world as it relates to gender. We need to ask the, answer the question, why? You need to hear preaching, teaching, but now you need to hear the second question. What does the Bible say about gender. I want to begin by reading Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 and following. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper corresponding to him. The Lord God formed out of the ground every wild animal and every bird of the sky and brought each to the man to see what he would call it. And whatever the man called the living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the sky, to every wild animal. But for the man, no helper was found corresponding to him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs, closed the flesh at that place. Then the Lord God made that rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. Bob's little interpretation is he went, whoa, man. (laughs) That's just my my thought. And the man said, this one at last is bone to my bone, flesh to my flesh. This one would be called woman, for she was taken from man. This is why why a man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife, and they become one flesh. Both the man and his wife were naked, yet felt no shame. What does the Bible say? I want to move to the New Testament, what Jesus said. When Jesus was walking the soil of this earth, Jesus said, Matthew 19, 3 through 6, some Pharisees approached him to test him. They said, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife on any grounds? Haven't you read, Jesus replied, that he who created them in the beginning made them male and female. And he also said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. 
What do we learn from these passages? That every human being was made in the image of God. Every human being is made in the image of our Maker. You reflect the glory of God, the image of God, the dignity of God, the beauty of God. Turn to the person next to you and say, you look like God. You don't say you are God. That would be blasphemy. You say you look like God because the Bible says we are made in the image of God. I'll tell you a funny story, true story in my life. I was in high school. I was my friend Tom when I were walking down the hall and nobody was around. We saw a lost and found door in the little closet with lost and found stuff in our high school. And I don't know if it was Tom or me, but one of us decided to say, hey, we should go in there and take some clothes. Maybe some cool clothes in there. So we snuck in, turned the light on. I found this gray sweatshirt. It just looked so good as a hoodie. I was so excited. And I took it and put it in my backpack and went on with the day. And on the way home, I put it on and it had these goofy words in the front of it, but I just loved it. It was gray. It was kind of cool. And put it on. I got home and walked in the house. And my dad goes, hey, you got a new sweatshirt? I go, yeah, a friend gave it to me. He goes, really? He goes, you know what that word says in the front of your shirt? I said, no. He goes, that says Imago Dei. I said, what does that mean? He goes, oh, that's Latin for in the image of God. I'm like, ooh, guess who brought it back to the lost and found the next day? Because I was not imitating God there at all. The Imago Dei means image of God. You and I are made in the image of God. We reflect the glory of God. He made us intentionally as his own to reflect us. We are the likeness of God. Now think about that. Adam was assigned to name all the animals. Must have been quite a story. You know, there's a bird. Oh, you're a cardinal. You're blue. You're a blue jay. You know, you're a cow. I'll call you a cow. You look different. I'll call you a pig. In the passage of Scripture says he was looking for someone he could bond with, he could connect with. And it says there was no suitable one for him. So God said, Adam, go to sleep. And during his, the deep sleep God put him, he took a rib out of him and he formed a woman, Eve. And Adam woke up and said, whoa, man, woman. I found my compliment. I found the perfect connect. I found the match. A male and a female. I found the match. And it works. Everything is beautiful because she reflects the glory of God. He reflects the glory of God. And together they complement one another. And it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful and unique and different, yet equal in nature and dignity and value and worth. Totally different than animals. What was quoted earlier in the service, I'll quote again. Psalm 139. This is God speaking about you, male and female. For it was you who created my inward parts. God, you knit me together in my mother's womb. That's why we have dignity to life in the womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wonderfully made, wondrously made. Your works are wondrous. And I know it very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret, when I was formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. God's saying, you are made in the image of God, male and female. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, for we are his, God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, for God prepared ahead of time for us to do. The word in our culture right now is gender dysphoria. You know what the word dysphoria means? The Latin original word means unhappy. You know what the word euphoria is? Happy. When God created you, he was happy with his design. He was euphoric. It was the fall that messed up all gender. All of us, I say, all of us have gender dysphoria. 
All of us do. Every one of us is male or female, and we all are a little off sinfully in the perfect design of creation that God said euphoric. That's called sin. I'm unhappy sometimes in my own humanness as a male. I fall short because sin has stained me. I'm imperfect even in my own gender. But we learn, and we learn in week one, Genesis 3, 1 to 7, there was the fall of humankind. And when the fall of humankind took place, everything started to get confused and off and unclear. What was ordered became disordered, became confused and out of order. We learn in the scriptures that were read today that there are two genders, male and female. That was affirmed by Jesus Christ in Matthew 19, verse 4. When you were born, you were either male, which is XY chromosome, or female, XX chromosome. God never said oops when you were born. You were divinely designed by God. To reject God's design is to reject God's creation. You see, gender, de- gender design matters to God, therefore it should matter to, matter to us. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. When God formed you in his mother, your mother's womb, he made you male or female. And he, de- he desires for us as followers of Jesus Christ to proclaim God's design. In a culture that's so confused, we have good news. How God created us in his image. Now, at the same time, the passage teaches us and God's Word teaches us that we need to love all people. We have to think when it comes to gender, biblically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, relationally, with those who struggle with severe dysphoria. I sat down this week with Karen Justice from our church. Karen has been overseeing the ministry to parents of LGBTQ plus families for over 10 years. I am so thankful for her leadership. I am so proud of Faith Church, for that that church that cares for parents of those individuals who struggle with their identity. And we care for those who struggle. I want you to see a portion of the interview that I had with Karen this week and learn from her. I'm here with Karen Justice. Thank you, Karen, so much for the 10 years of leadership at Faith Church and ministering to the families and parents of LGBTQ plus um, of our congregation. We did not color coordinate our shirts at all. In fact, we laughed when we walked in because typically I'm the blue, male, blue here, pink, female. Actually, I'll give you a little history. Do you know 120 years ago is the opposite? Men wore pink and women wore blue. So we know not to attach that stereotype to a gender as well. So Karen, for 10 years, you and I have ministered and learned and gone to seminars and online seminars. Even this week, we interviewed a professor of of a seminary who's an expert in this, written many books on how to minister to families. Looking back in 10 years, what are some of the things you've learned that you can pass on to your church family? Well, I think the first thing, Bob, is what you said in your message, that all people are created in God's image and they deserve our love and our respect. For decades, the LGBTQ plus people uh, have been mistreated. And we have to shift our posture to make sure that our attitudes, our actions, and our words um, reflect that of Jesus Christ. We maintain our biblical position. However, um, we love them as uh, God loves us. Which is interesting. That is the posture of Jesus. To love unconditionally all sinners, myself included. And Jesus is our model. He's our example. And so thank you, Karen, for loving families. And the Lord bless you as you continue on. What else have you learned for these last 10 years we reflect on? Um, I think there's a misconception um, that acceptance means approval. Jesus accepts us in our sin every single day. We fall short of his glory. He still accepts us. And we need to do the same for others. Um, We can still honor God in our beliefs and our actions and at the same time love people um, that fall away from God's word. It's this balance of grace and truth. If we're too far on the side of grace or we're too far on the side of truth, we're not loving others well. 
Did you hear that? That is a beautiful, beautiful um, summary. What Faith Church is about, we are an Orthodox church, but we balance grace and truth. And that's exactly how Jesus led his life when he was on earth to, for us to follow. Thank you, Karen. Um, I want, we want to hear your heart. Tell us what's on your heart and you feel passionate about as minister over, this, uh, over these families. Bob, there can be a lot of um, grief and shame and fear associated with um, a parent's LGBTQ plus loved one coming out. Uh, there's grief because um, they're grieving the loss of what they thought their child's life was gonna look like. They may fear for their child's safety. They definitely fear, uh, what are people gonna think of me? Um, what are they gonna think of my family? Uh, there have been friendships lost. There have been hurtful things said. Um, and so Faith Church, let's be a place where we accept and love all people. Amen to that, for sure, Karen. Thank you for loving that way. And I do agree, Faith Church, we need to be a safe place where people feel loved and accepted. You and I were on an interview on the internet this week with Professor Mark Yard Yardhouse, amazing professor, written many books. He said something that really hit me, he said, when your child comes out of the closet, a lot of times the parents go into the closet. Mm -hmm. Very and that, true. Isn't that true? Very true. And that's actually not what we want. We want the parents to walk with them, love them, guide them, so that God will be glorified in everything. I think what I'd like to do, Karen, if you're okay, I'd like to close this uh, little interview with um, prayer and to pray for you and to pray for the ministry and the families. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for loving us. We're broken, we're sinful. We've walked away in rebellion from you in so many ways, known and unknown, and yet you love us. Father, forgive us for not loving all people the way we are taught by you, Jesus, as you walked this soil. Father, thank you for Karen. Thank you for the parents that are meeting with her, the support they can give to one another. And Lord, as a church, we support her and the ministries of these families. We pray for the, their children. God, we want to glorify you in every aspect of our life. Thank you for Faith Church. Thank you for making it a safe place where people are welcomed, accepted, and pointed to Jesus. We ask this all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Like I said, I'm so thankful for the ministry that Faith Church has for families, parents of children that are struggling. And if you by chance are struggling or you know someone who's struggling with gender dysphoria, please reach out. We care. We love. We're concerned. In fact, Karen Justice texted me this afternoon. She said, Bob, tell them my, my email address, kjustice at wearefaith.org. She said, I'd love to talk to any parent or anybody who's struggling with this as well. Reach out to me. Reach out to one of the elders at Faith Church. Reach out to one of the pastors that are on staff here. Now let's summarize. How do we apply this message from God's Word for you and for me and for our church? Number one, there are two genders, male and female. Body, mind, and soul. Don't separate them. You are male or female, body, soul, and mind. And that's how Lord created us. We need to celebrate the design as individuals. Parents, you need to disciple your children to celebrate your children as male and female. You need to teach them that there are two genders because they're growing up in a world that's very confusing. We also need to know this, that to alter God's design with surgery and medicine is, a, is sin. It's a violation of God's created order. And the other word, another thing that's really interesting, studies say that 90% of people who are children who grow up with a dysphoria grow out of it by adulthood. Why would we urge surgery? Why would we even think about medicine? When you walk with someone who's struggling with dysphoria, the goal ought to be to celebrate God's design. In fact, I walk with, I've walked with several people that struggle with dysphoria, 
And my goal is always to celebrate who, who God made them, but also tell them that God's desire for them, his goal for them is to live a single or celibate life. That's God's design. Singlehood, singleness is wonderful. Being pure is beautiful. It's God glorifying. What do we learn from God's word? That male and female cannot be fluid. A male cannot be a female and a female cannot be a male. Attempts to change our bodies is sin. What do we learn? We learn that at creation, everything was perfect. That's what we learn in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Everything was perfect, clear, and in order in every possible way, including our gender. And everything was very good. The creation account is so fun. Every time God created something, it was very good. It was very good. It's very good. It's very good. Until we read Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve sinned, all that was clear became unclear. All that was perfect became imperfect. Everything that was not without stain became stained by sin. Everything that was in order became disordered. What do we learn? Here's what happened to me this week. There was a moment of enlightenment where the light bulb went off for me. I saw so clearly God saying, I created the world perfectly with clarity and order. Sin entered the world and everything got confused and disordered. But then I realized Jesus Christ came to bring it back order and clarity. You see, when you submit to Jesus Christ, he changes us. Our old becomes new. What was confused becomes clear. What becomes imperfect is on a journey to perfection. We won't reach perfection until Christ comes again or we go to see him face to face upon our death. But in the meantime, we're on a journey of God changing us. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Everything is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God is reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to the message to them, the message of reconciliation to us. How do you seek to be more and more like the image reflecting of God? By submitting to Jesus Christ to be the leader of your body, your soul, your mind, your gender. I've met recently with a man in our church who loves Jesus, who struggles with dysphoria. I've met with him many times. He's a beautiful example of what God's up to. He put his trust in Jesus. He's saved. And he's on a journey becoming more like Christ. He battles every day the feelings inside his body and his mind that are dysphoria. But what a beautiful, I am so proud to be his friend, to see how God is taking something that was broken and made clean and pure and holy. We learn we need to learn to love all people, including those who struggle with gender dysphoria. We need to continue to make Faith Church a safe place where people who struggle can be honest about their lives and be loved. If you're here today and you do struggle with any form of dysphoria, please be honest. Because God's got a beautiful future planned for you. We are all stained. We all have gender dysphoria to some respects. But Jesus Christ can bring euphoria as we trust in him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the clear teaching of the word of God as to who we are. We celebrate, God, that you made us in your image, male and female. God, we all have dysphoria because we're frail, we're sinful, we're broken. But thanks be to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to bring back to order that which is broken. God, thank you that we can put our trust in you. Because of that, we can call, be called children of God. 
chosen, designed, and made fearfully and wonderfully. Lord Jesus, I pray for the families, the moms and dads who struggle with children, who struggle with human sexuality. I pray that they will feel welcome to call and walk with other families. I do pray, Lord, in particular for those who struggle with human sexuality. I pray that they will encounter Jesus Christ and begin the journey of you transforming them just like you're transforming me by the power of your Holy Spirit and the Word of God. God, may we be a safe place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray in Christ's name and all God's people agreed and said, Amen. Will you stand and respond in song with us? these cards for the summer serve we are we love to give our normal volunteers and faith kids a weekend i mean a summer off and we need your help and so if you want to take you know, one or twice throughout the summer serve the faith kids ministry it'd be awesome you can take this card with you and uh you can sign up online as well for that if you have a heavy burden of prayer out in the prayer room sam and julie are there they would love to pray with you uh, offload the burden that you're carrying as well and as you saw, God's on the move. We saw the video of what God's doing at Beecher and in Highland and Cedar Lake. And 
God's done the move. And how is it supplied? By your generosity, your tithes and offerings. And thank you, church, for your giving. You can give online as well, or you can give in the boxes on the way out. And the Bible says we give generously, but we give cheerfully as well. It's a form of worship. And thank you for that as well. If you feel comfortable, if you put your hands out, I'd love to a symbol of surrender and receiving a blessing from the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now until we see him face to face. Amen.